P2P Angler Jason Reese heading out on a beautiful uh, early March morning here in South Florida, going out of Hillsboro Inlet, going on the uh, the solo mission today. Just me and Skipper heading out, gonna do a little bit of trolling and uh, a couple hours maybe, see what's on the bottom, try to find a mutton or two, and um, back for an early lunch. We got afternoon full of stuff to do today, so it's gonna be a quick one, but see what we can get into out there on the uh, solo troll. The, the spread real quick. So going out on the um, Shotgun, it's gonna be this little squid bait. On the starboard outrigger is gonna be this pink tuna taco. On the uh, the longer planer rod, it's gonna be a uh, blue and white sea witch, the little blue squid. And then on the short, instead of another planer, is gonna be this DTX 200 minnow. So hoping to um, get out there and get after a, a wahoo maybe. And I'm trolling the bigger one this time, trying to catch a uh, a bigger bigger wahoo. And then on the uh, on the port outrigger, we got a little uh, rattle jet. So, in the spirit of always kind of trying something new, got a couple of uh, new baits in the spread, and um, go out there, see what we can get into for the first couple of hours, and then um, if the uh, troll dies down, um, either maybe do a little bit of drifting or anchor up, and uh, maybe even catch some live bait and see what we can find on the bottom. See you guys out there. <laughs> After seven, we've got the shotgun out, the two outriggers out, and I had a lot of interest and questions about the, the inline planer, so I'm gonna try to do a little bit better narrating the detail on what we're doing out here. So, when you need a strip, uh, I make them myself, so if it's terrible, you know, it's, I'm, I'm still getting better at it. Uh, small squid, and then a sea witch, pulls, big profile over it, we get hooked up, the big long shank hook, ball barrel swivel, ball, ball bearing swivel, make sure that uh, you're getting something big, you can still Still bring it in, it twists around, it's fine. Then what we do is I've got 100 feet of um, 60 pound mono. So I'm gonna let that out first. Try to keep the boat straight while I'm doing it here. So that's all, all the mono is going out. Then you see this orange cord here. And all this is is two wind on swivels, right? We, uh, we, we put the weight, gotta put this into the cord side, weight towards the boat. So we send it out like this. I'm just gonna get it straightened back out here. And when it's in this form, it pulls pretty smooth, right? It'll pull through the water, no problem. But when we set it, it's gonna put this weight up, create drag, bring your bait further underwater. And then when the fish pulls it, then you don't fight the planer all the way in. And all I'm gonna do is deploy this on about a 45 second count, because this is gonna be the further away. This is a size 4.6 planer. That means that the um, planer plate is a four size and the weight is a six size. I'm just thumbing it here, letting it go out. About 15 more seconds. So if you're gonna run two planers, you let the smaller one out first and then you put the bigger one in closer to the boat. So I'm gonna grab this extra line up here, gonna lock this in, pull this forward, and then some slack about hip height, let it go. And that's what a set planer rod looks like. And then when it gets triggered, it's gonna pull tight and the uh, rod tip will pop up, which is counterintuitive for most, for most fishermen. Turn the alarm on. Sure we got a little bit of give there in case we get hit. I've lost a bunch of good fish on uh, not giving enough slack on the planer because it's you're pulling a bunch of drag and you got to make sure that you're not creeping line out as you go, but you got enough drag that when a big fish hits, you don't lose it almost immediately. So that's the further away one. And over here on the far side, got this DTX minnow. This is a bigger one. So you saw my last videos where I've caught a couple of nice wahoo in the 25 pound class range. This one is gonna be um, bigger. This is a, a bigger one hoping to entice a bigger fish here. And I'm gonna pull this one. So at, when you, I put this on, I crimp a mono, 180 pound mono crimped here and just 10 feet of this. And I feel like the mono gets more bites and there's a chance that it could get bitten off, but that's a pretty big um, bait to hit. 
you're going to think a Wahoo usually strikes the tail and cuts the propulsion off or hits the mid length. So I like my odds on the sides here of not getting cut off. And we're going to send this. Uh, this is going to be the, the bait that's going to be um, closest to the boat. And I'm only going to give it about 10 to 15 seconds. You don't want to send this out too far and have it get hung up with the planer. That'll be catastrophic. Okay. And that's our uh, five line spread. So this is kind of how I manage a five line spread out here solo. Right, Skipper Girl? So not even 710 yet. Hoping that the uh, early morning bite here, which I think is probably going to be our only shot at really getting something great. It's probably the first like 90 minutes, maybe two hours, then I'll probably be done, be done trolling. So hopefully when I turn this camera back on, we are hooked up. 7.30, been trolling just outside of this little weed line, not seeing a whole lot so far, no bites. We just found this floating piece of debris in it. We're gonna troll by this guy and see if there's anything home. A little floating rope down there, which tends to be a good sign too. See if we pick anything up on that floating buoy. In about 3:57. Now, make more than anything, we just picked up a little bit of weed. We're gonna. Maybe heading a little bit shallower and bounce between two and three hundred for a little bit. We've been out in three to four hundred and there's been no action. And this little rip here has, hasn't produced anything in 20 minutes. So when something's not working, you gotta try something else. So we'll uh, try some different depths here and keep bouncing around and see if we can find them. Popped at like 109 for a second. And then it got reset. I'm not sure what's on, if anything. And dial it back a little bit. I see you, girl. Hang tight. So we dip back in, hoping to maybe pick up a king or something a little shallower here. Right around that 110 mark off of the second reef. You can see the planer coming in. There's a fish back there, you see it? All right. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be a, a king. That's what we came in here targeting. The planer off. So if you get the get the planer off, you can fight the fish all the way back. Just trying to hand line this thing in. I still have this deep diving lure, this DTX minnow here, but this fish doesn't seem too big. Should be able to control it. Oh, good jump. Let's see if this is going to be a, a flipper or a gaffer. Looks like the king we're targeting. Yeah. All right. Could maybe flip that, but we're going to go ahead and gaff him. Pretty decent gaff shot. All right. All right, fish in the boat. What I do is I just get back to speed. We got, still have four lines in play. All right, solid, solid king. And now we got four lines back on the troll. Keep fishing. 
I actually might try to pick up one more. It limits two, so got room for one more. Let's see if what we had here is still on. I feel like it is. That looks pretty, pretty bent. Whatever it is, we picked it up shallow. And we've been dragging it off of that side of that second reef all the way out here. Get to work here. Yeah, what is that? Got a cross line here. Up at this rigger. Over that second reef, I wonder if we could even like it picked up a grouper or something. Nope. Went back over. Okay. Let's see if he's under that line. We still have the, the DTX down here too, so that's not great either, but hopefully we can get him in. See a little bit of color back there, and we are about two thirds of the way up the leader, so maybe another like 30 feet to go here. Oh, that looks like a big bodied fish. I'm worried we might, this might be a, a grouper, which would be a great catch, except it's not in season. That is what we have going here. Wow. Look at this awesome grouper that came up and hit the planer. I gotta be careful grabbing him because they're out of season, so we're not putting a gaff in him. What a beautiful fish, wow. That is a gorgeous black grouper. Unfortunately, out of season, so I couldn't be able to keep him. Let's get dialed back up and get him back in the water. The interesting there, thing there is, I um, was trolling shallower that planer was getting down lower towards that second reef and that like 70 feet of water off of the, off of the far ledge and that rubble. And a lot of times that's where you'll pick up some of those bottom fish that are down there in that rubble patrolling it. Get this one, the outrigger back out. Beautiful, beautiful grouper there. Wrapped up the morning troll, two hours almost, um, only two bites. Thankfully we converted both the bites, got nothing out deep in that, you know, three to 400, 450 range, ran a weed line for a while, nothing home. Um, picked up one king going in shallower and one grouper off the reef on a planer, which is pretty exciting. That's always uh, different and fun. Had to safely release it though, since it uh, was out of season. It took like 10 minutes to go through and do a um, whole like descending device on it. So, um, anchored up here. There's not a lot of current as you can see here with the chum. We are um, just east of the second reef, so we're in that like um, uh, 80, uh, 80 foot depth, like out in the sandy bottom, and then we anchor and then um, let, let rope out, try to drift over that like rocky rubble where those muttons like to patrol. So um, the chum working down here, not a lot of current. It's not a great time in the morning. The tide's kind of slack, so I don't have high expectations. I'm gonna give it maybe um, half an hour to 45 minutes here, then I'm gonna pull up and go. But I already got two lines deployed, so I've got just a little jig with a live pilchard on this one. Got a, a dead sardine with a weight on the bottom on the far one there. And on this one, I'm gonna show you guys uh, how we're gonna hook this up. So, it's taken me a little bit of time to figure out what works pretty well in this um, bottom fishing scenario to keep some of these live baits uh, down where you want them with enough enough room to be effective. 
So I'll show you what I've been doing here. So we're gonna hook up this guy. I know people have different ways of hooking them. I like to put them on the bottom. I've been punching them just through the, uh, looks too tough, underneath the dorsal fin. I'm gonna let out some line here, get him safely in the water. So I've got about 15 feet of uh, floral carbon there, 40 pound. Oh, those other fish are already chasing them. And then what I've got is a um, FG knot to the braid with a, uh, a dropper loop right on top. And what I'm gonna do here, I have a weight. So there's not much current here. So this is just a six ounce bank sinker. And with this, here's the FG knot. And here's the dropper loop. So I'm gonna just tuck him in there. And I'm gonna start to drop him out here a little bit. I'm gonna feather him all the way down. Hopefully these triggers leave him alone. So I don't wanna just send it and have him spiraling down there. But as I get him a little bit down here, get him out of range of these shallow fish. I'm actually gonna take the line and pop it into the outrigger and then I'm gonna just move the line out. So even though I'm not trolling anymore, I leave the outriggers here. Um, just so I can kind of feather this while I'm sending out the line away from the other one. This just keeps my bottom lines a little further apart from each other. So I'm just slowly holding that line, letting it go down while I bump this out. It's gets a little more challenging if you got like a big current day and you're doing like a 32 ounce sinker then it wants to pull out of the clip and you got to tighten the clip and all that stuff. So I'm going to let line out and then I'm going to let the weight hit the bottom. And then what will happen from there is uh, he'll have room to swim and hopefully, you know, 15 feet away there's going to be a big, big hungry mutton that's going to gobble him up. So if this camera comes back on, hopefully we're tight. All right, guys, well, the, uh, the bottom fish, we've been out here for like 30, 40 minutes, which is probably twice as long as we should have been. There's no current and uh, it's slack tide. And there's just not a whole lot going on here. So if I was going to stay out all day, I'd, I'd wait it out and go somewhere else. But I think we're going to pull the last of the baits here and uh, head on in. We'll uh, clean the kingfish. We only brought home one fish today uh, to let the grouper go. And uh, if you stick around, we'll, uh, we'll grill it up tonight. Thanks, guys. kicked off there. So um, once you get this part of the fillet, and I'm going to leave the skin on the back side, it's really easy. You're just going to cut out the bones here near the uh, bloodline in the middle. And that's going to leave me with two really long fillets, longer than they're going to fit into a, a gallon Ziploc bag. So I'll uh, cut these out and then cut them into smaller pieces that are going to be easy to toss on the grill. Getting through the skin here. So at the end, you'll wind up with two fillets from each side, about this size right here. Which you'll feed the family and a couple of friends, maybe a neighbor or two. you what would have been great eating tonight would have been that grouper if it was in season that's heartbreak city throwing a nice grouper like that back all 
All right. A lot of hungry catfish and jacks down there. All right, so that's it. We got two nice fillets on each side here. I'm gonna cut these in half, throw them into a bag. I'm gonna marinate them in zesty Italian dressing. And I will see you later on at the grill. All right, guys, got the boat cleaned up. Still nice and early. Uh, it's one of the nice things about going fishing and coming back in before lunch is you don't come back uh, totally exhausted and don't want to cook at the end of the day. So um, we got that kingfish all filleted up. Uh, so all I did was chunk it up into um, some good grill size pieces and I um, didn't want any, any fresh water over it, keep that meat fresh. I'm going to dump a whole bunch of uh, zesty Italian in here for my health conscious angler friends. I, uh, I respect you, but this is not the place to do that light, light dressing. So what you want is to get a bunch of dressing in here, let it start working its way into all that meat and breaking it down. I think kingfish gets a, a bad rap as one of the, the less tasting, um, or the less good tasting fish on the reef, but they, uh, they're great. You know, you cook them the right way, they're good. Um, they eat the same kind of fish that, uh, you know, a wahoo or any of those other kind of fish are gonna eat, a snapper, a grouper. And yeah, I would have loved to have um, be cooking that grouper right now, but that was out of season. So hopefully we'll uh, catch him in May instead of uh, March. So what I'm gonna do is uh, put that kingfish on the grill. It's gonna grill up fast, and as it's, I'm gonna go skin side down, and we're gonna add um, any kind of spicy seafood seasoning. So they're all kind of similar. Here's one from Wild Cork that's really good, and here is one from Everglades, fish and chicken, which is also really good. So put it on there. It's easy to grill up. This thing's gonna probably grill up in like four minutes flat, and uh, we're gonna feed. Uh, we got some family coming in. It's probably the reason we're in early today is. Uh, my wife's brother, uh, Noah, and his family coming down from Michigan, so looking forward to seeing them this evening, and hopefully they enjoy. And uh, we're gonna get uh, Noah out fishing uh, tomorrow. It's gonna be a couple days in front of the, uh, the full moon, so hoping to uh, get a shot at some uh, wahoo. All right, guys, night has come. Yeah. Noah and the family are here. Time to throw on the kingfish. It's been marinating for a few hours. So I'm gonna start just to do a little bit of a uh, flesh side down. And you'll see that one, one king, not even on the big side, can still feed. Family of uh, family of seven here with all the kids. These are good. All right, so we're gonna give that about a minute, 90 seconds tops. And then we'll flip them over, put some seasoning on them, and uh, that'll be it. Well, they'll be ready to go in less than, uh, less than five minutes for sure. Spatula helps when you put them flush side down to start. Pull them off the grill. We got those flipped over. Gonna hit them with some spicy seafood seasoning. And some you can also, um, if you want to use a little bit of your leftover marinade, put it back on top. A little extra flavor. Yeah, wanna say hi, hi to the folks? Hi!
YouTube. And uh, after you've got them seasoned, a little parsley on top, give that about three minutes, and we'll be ready to go. And you can see that kingfish, and it's on the smaller side especially, is just as white and delicate as a lot of other fish you would catch out there on the reef. Next time, the G2P angler. We'll see you out on the water. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. guys. Cheers.